We have our grain spawn, we have our liquid culture syringe, now we're ready to inoculate our grain spawn. If you haven't watched my video on how to prepare your grain spawn, this is popcorn grain, be sure to watch that. And I can't really help you on where to find your liquid cultures or your spore syringes. There are a lot of trusted vendors out there. Um, I don't like talking about it in, in my YouTube videos because they can take my videos down for talking about uh, suppliers. There are a lot of great ones out there though where you can buy your gourmet medicinal mushrooms, either spore cultures or sorry, spore syringes or liquid cultures. Spore, spore syringes have the actual mushroom spores in them. Think of those as the mushroom seeds. Liquid culture has actual living tissue mycelium so that's the living mushroom tissue inside of the syringe so it's inside of um, think of it as like a syrup it's basically like a little bit of honey and, and water sterilized and then you inject a little bit of the mushroom into it and then it will continue to grow mycelium and spread and spread and spread and then you use this to put onto your grain spawn liquid culture is much quicker to spread and to to take to launch to expand whatever you want to call it and so uh, a lot of people prefer to use liquid cultures when possible so i have a liquid culture here this is lion's mane i am a brain surgery survivor and i have a lot of permanent nerve damage because because of that and lion's mane is one of the few neuroprotective mushrooms that is science backed data researched but it, it's been shown and proven to uh, regenerate damaged nerve cells so i don't know if it does much for me but i do like to use lion's mane supplement and why not grow and make your own and i'll be showing you guys how to do that so i have the needle on this syringe because i'm also making some liquid cultures over here which you can see so i'll be doing that next so i already have the needle on here just to make it easy you don't need it for this now i'm not going to be actually injecting through these airports here i could and then put a piece of micro pore tape over top of it i've done that before i'm not going to typically what i do is just slowly and gently remove the lid you can see i'm working in my still air box here i've i've sterilized everything i've been working in here you can see i actually have a pool of uh rubbing alcohol on the bottom that's piled up um for those of you that have been doing this for a while tell me what do you do um, I know some people lay a rag on the bottom a lot of people do a bleach solution with the rag that they sit on the bottom uh, like paper towels underneath the uh, cooling rack here what's the best thing to do and more importantly what's the most sanitary thing to do so I don't have this pulled up leave me a comment and let me know so anyways I have my needle on here in the syringe typically what I will do I am if you watch my other mycology videos you know that I'm a little over zealous with my rubbing alcohol I figure when the still air box, as long as you keep spraying it with some alcohol and letting it sit, it's going to kill most of the germs that are in here. And so I'm constantly spraying everything down, spraying my hands down my arms as well and the walls of the still air box. But typically what I'll do is I'll, I'll spray around the jar like I did. I'll spray the syringe a little bit if I need to. This is a sterile syringe, or sorry, a sterile needle that came with the syringe. So I'm not gonna flame sterile, sterilize this when I use it over here. And for this, it's a clean syringe, so I don't need to flame sterilize it anyways, but I'm not gonna do actually any injecting anyways. You'll see here what I'm going to do. I'm just gonna slowly crack the lid. And I'm gonna use, you can use one to two cc's of liquid culture. The more you use, the quicker it's going to expand but you also have to be aware that the more you use the more at risk you are of, of wet rot and of just rotting out your popcorn so when it's too wet there's too much moisture it, the mycelium doesn't expand as much and it's slower to expand in general that way so your grain spawn typically starts to rot before your mycelium actually takes hold and takes off so don't put too much i'm notorious for putting too much liquid culture spore solution in so i tend to go on the lower end you can even do 0.5 cc's and it will be totally fine it'll take a little longer for it to completely colonize the jar but i have one of my pet peeves there's no other way around this but there are always labels that are put at the top so you can never see that first year or two and oftentimes they'll fill it up to 11 or 12 cc's being generous which is great the supplier does not they usually only do right at 10 which is which is fine but nonetheless the label gets in the way so you can't see that first cc or two 
it's always kind of annoying. But then I put extra tape around here because my uh, rubbing alcohol was making the names bleed and I didn't want to lose them because uh, I almost lost them off of five of my other medicinal mushroom varieties here. So uh, I'm talking, I forgot I, I didn't put my face mask on. I'm going to put that on. You might hear my voice muffle a little bit more. Apologies for that. But I do wear a face mask when I'm working just so I'm not breathing things in. I've just been doing it as I'm blabbing away, but especially as I'm making videos. Most people do voiceovers. Most of my videos I do live, actually almost all of them. And one of the benefits to that is you're getting live action. You're, you're getting the real deal. There are barely any cuts or anything like that. If they are, it's just me and they're my ums and uhs and things like that. But what you see is what you get. And so if I screw up, you're going to see it. And so I'm pretty, pretty open and honest uh, in sharing when uh, I get contamination and things like that. So if this goes wrong because I've been blabbing too much, that's why. So anyways, we got this one done. Typically when I'm not talking, I have an assembly line set up. Oh, Oh my God, you guys, I didn't even, well, it's not done. What the fudge? I'm talking too much. All right, let's, let's inoculate this jar real quick. I would have been waiting on this. I would have been waiting and waiting for weeks. I'd be like, holy shit, that's one slow, slow growing uh, liquid culture. Sorry for the language. All right, let's inject this. I started telling you my pet peeve and then uh, I stopped. So I, I'm not going to know how much this is, to be honest with you. I, I eyeball it, but I give it a little squirt. But it's typically under one cc is what I do now. Uh, that first push, sometimes there is a little uh, resistance. So I'll usually pull back a little bit and then give it a push. And that helps. But still, sometimes that first push is, is hard and you get a lot more than what you're you're wanting but if you can get it to just drip a little bit that's good and i haven't opened it more than you probably need to you can just open it a crack and call it good and then i'll move it off to the side get my next one these ones i've already sprayed typically what i do is i take the ring off i get extra paranoid at this part and i'm like oh man but the part underneath the ring it never got sprayed there's probably germs under there so I'll just quickly spray around the edge of the uh, jar again. So again, we're just going to crack it a little bit and give it a CC or so. I actually could not see there. I hope you guys could with the shadows. <laughs> I know I squirted some into it. Now, I already did some liquid cultures. I have six plus eight. That's 14. Is that 14? Yes, that's 14. So I have 14 varieties of mushrooms. Holy shit. Wow. Nikes, holy shnikes is what I said. So typically what I, I'll do until these dry off and, and until I can label them, I have so many and I'll show you here in a minute. Oh, I have I have some other, some pictures I can show of all the jars I have inoculated so far and the liquid cultures I have. I have a lot of them, but uh, what I'll do is I'll sit them with the jars with the liquid culture syringe on top of it, just so I remember what it is. Then I can wipe it down once it's all out of my still air box and label everything. Let's do the next one real quick. We got our lion's mane. This next one is coral tooth. I'm excited about this. I've never grown coral tooth before. Very similar to lion's mane. I believe it's in the same family of mushrooms. They're cousins or something like that. It's another uh, kind of like gill, I, I think uh, gill variety, long gill, something like that. But it, it grows kind of the same long. No, I, I take that back. It, it's white like lion's mane. It doesn't have the same tentacles it looks more like a piece of coral to be honest with you it looks like lion's mane like a branch of lion's mane that's been elongated because it needed air before it grows the tentacles <laughs> if that makes sense so anyways let's do this real quick same thing i've got the rings off spray the jars spray my hands get your syringe you can see how quickly we can do this Give it a squirt, a squirt. Really, as long with a quarter size jar like this, and if you have a strong liquid culture, and these are pretty strong, see how thick these are. And two CCs, it's gonna colonize really quickly. And the risk of wet rot, wet rot is pretty low. You can, you can probably even go higher than that in all reality, as long as it's a really vigorous liquid culture. And as long as your grain spawn is very dry. 
if you already have a wet grain spawn, you're, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot there already. So uh, we've got our coral tooth. I almost, you guys almost witnessed me mix these up. Coral tooth and our lion's mane. I'm gonna take these out of the tent now because I'm gonna move on to some liquid cultures. And then I'm gonna move on to some agar plates. So I've got my coral tooth here. And beside that, I'm gonna sit my lion's mane. Lion's mane is on the right. Whoops, I forgot to put the ring on that one and my coral tooth is on the left. Now, the last thing I'll do with these, since we've got a grain spawn here, there are two things you can do. You can leave it, let it sit, do a break and shake in about two weeks or so, a week if you're lucky, or you can shake it right now and distribute that liquid culture. And if you get it shaken up evenly and be gentle with it, don't kill your liquid culture. But if you get it shaken up evenly and get a nice coating on all of the grain, it should start to grow all over the place and the whole jar will expand. It's, it, it, the whole jar will colonize at once. It's pretty cool. But otherwise, what will happen, maybe I'll try to do one for an experiment. I'll leave this one. If any ran down the side, you'll see a stream of mycelium form and then it'll expand off. So either way it works. I like to shake mine generally, so I'll shake those coral tooth ones over there. But that is how you inoculate your grain spawn with a liquid culture. Same process with a spore syringe, nothing different there. So now these are going to go in my inoculation tent. I actually have a little grow tent that I can show you in another film that I use for inoculating my jars and liquid cultures. It's dark, it's warm, I put grow mats in there. It's perfect for inoculating for that incubation time. I should say not an inoculation tent, an incubation tent. I let all my jars incubate in there. So that's where these are going. Check on them in a week. Actually, I, I lie. I'll check on them sooner than that. Every couple of days, I usually take a peek. I know you're not supposed to, but two weeks, I expect these to be done. We'll do a break and shake midway, probably. And then uh, about two, uh, I should say, give it, I'll probably give them a full three weeks. And that's if these liquid cultures are good. So we'll see, it's all up to that. But to test these out, we're also gonna be doing some, we're, we're gonna be expanding the liquid cultures, making more liquid cultures out of these liquid cultures. And then we're gonna be testing some of them, at least on agar plates to make sure that they're clean. And then we can use that for a variety of other projects. So I'll show you how to do both of those things next.